Hello everybody, I'm Nick and a few days ago there was this post on Reddit asking do you consider .NET to be a good stack for startups and small businesses or even solo developers? And even though I kinda have covered this topic a couple of years ago with another video which got quite a lot of views actually because there's a lot of misconceptions around this topic, I do want to go through this post again and see what has changed and what people think because the ecosystem and landscape has actually changed quite a bit in a couple of years and now I am myself the owner of a startup or small business that is built in .NET so I think I have more insight about hiring and things like this. So let's see what we have. So from what I've observed, startups usually go for the main stack that is MongoDB Express, React and Node or any related JS or TypeScript or React. Python with fast API Django and Flask is also popular and I definitely see Golang and Ruby on Rails much less often. Java with Spring or Quarkus and .NET and they're even more rare in small businesses and startups. What do you think the reason is for this? Modern .NET is great, Aspire is great too, functional, powerful, yada yada yada. So why is it not used? Look, the first thing is you do have that stigma still. The stigma of .NET being what it is will never go away. It could have been rebranded and sort of escape it in many ways, but it wasn't and it's still called .NET and people will think forever .NET is this. Even if the new generation comes in that has completely new ideas, as long as the senior developers or lead developers from the old days talking about how bad and vendor locked you will be in .NET, that will never go away. We can keep working on trying to fix the messaging and I think Aspire is a thing towards that, but realistically it's been 10 years now, it's not really going anywhere. Now, yes, you're asking in the C Sharp subreddit if .NET is a good technology choice, so we're gonna skip that, of course, everyone will say yes, 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 but actually here's another comment saying startups go for these tags because they have the delusion that devs for Python and JS are cheaper and therefore maintenance and development of the product will be cheaper in the long run. I strongly disagree with this. What you see is junior developers for Python and JS, specifically JS and TypeScript, are cheaper, but actually senior developers on those things, especially Python, and this is something I've seen hiring in the companies I used to work for, the actual senior good front-end developers on React at the time were actually costing us more than C-sharp developers of equivalent skill level, because Yes, you can get away with a lot on the web, but actually if you really, really know your stuff, you can be pretty viable salary-wise. Now, Python has completely exploded because of AI, so Python developers in general significantly more expensive and more well-paid than .NET developers. Now, developer making products in JS and Python is just agony. I disagree. I think that we have this abstraction obsession and this complexity obsession to put everything into boxes in .NET and we think that this is not agony. I find that more agony than the way you develop JS and Python products and being in a company now that I get to choose the best tool for the right job. Yes, we're 80% .NET, but we actually use quite a few things, mainly JavaScript and TypeScript, that .NET, yes, would work, but it just makes more sense to do JS. TypeScript is a step in the right direction, I agree it's a great language, but it's just JS at runtime. Yeah, sure, it's like saying that .NET is just IL at runtime too. I don't really care about this comment too much and this, this sort of way of looking into the problem. I have now finally convinced my startup buddy to let me do a piece of our stack in C-Shop and development has been more than solving problems. You have, when you're working in startups and small companies, you have to understand the most important thing out of everything else is the product. You're building the product, you're not building the code. That is why Vibe Coding and all of this like prompt driven development is about developers becoming, especially in startups, becoming project managers than developers. I hear from people that I talk to a lot that's like, oh, the artistry now is gone because an AI tool can write your code so, so easily. And that is true to a degree, but that bothers you because you're the software engineer and you pay to write code. The business wants to sell a product, doesn't necessarily care about the code itself. All it cares about is can this product work? If you saw Facebook's code 15 years ago, you'd be like, what the hell is going on here? But it didn't matter because the product itself was solid and the code can always be improved later. So 
there's a lot, especially when you run a business, that you prioritize more, way, way more than the, the code quality. Again, you're going to see that way more in startups because startups just want to get their MVP out and the value proposition. And I don't really think it has to do that much with Microsoft. It's just that the notion of JS, TypeScript and Python being that language that will get your MVP out quickly, even though maybe not necessarily true, is still the, the common understanding. So that's why it will be picked more for these types of things. I can do something still with JS and uh, Python and Django way faster than I would do it with .NET. In fact, try it. As a .NET developer, read a tutorial and see how quickly you can make a fast API or something with TypeScript or JS and Express. Yes, minimal APIs are getting there and they're a step in the right direction, but they're basically playing catch up with something that Python and JS already had for many, many years. So see around you because there's other choices that might make sense for where your company is right now. It's not about your clean architecture, your DDD, your event-driven architecture. It's not about any of that. It's about the product. Another one is like, I'm currently launching my own startup. Both website and app itself are written in .NET. C Sharp is wonderful, fast language, and I love it for 17 years. I recommend it to all startups. I would not recommend it to all startups. It's going to be harder to hire for. Objectively, there's just way more JS developers out there, TypeScript developers. And sometimes this is all you care about on the startup stage. Yes, at the beginning, perhaps, not perhaps, definitely, their technologies are easier to learn. But as the project grows, C Sharp and its advanced complexity management system will give you run for its money. I would argue Java with his latest versions, which is playing catch up to C Sharp, is even better in many ways in this. And, and it has been growing silently in the, in the background to actually catch up with performance when it comes to C Sharp. So, you can make the same argument and then be like, oh yeah, why not replace C Sharp here with Java? Plus, if you need a front end on a desktop app, which this application actually does need, then Java had cross-platform front end for years, since forever. So again, don't be tunnel visioned is, is my guidance. Is it a good stack for startups, small businesses, or even solo developers? Yes, if you already know it. I wouldn't say Yes, if you need to learn it necessarily at this point. If I am a developer with an idea and I want to vibe code an MVP, I'm probably going to use JS and Python if I don't know .NET, because then I have at least something out of the door. I can prove that this minimum vibe product can do something, and then it makes it easier to hire to get people on board. The ecosystem is changing. AI is changing everything. So do not ignore that. If you try to vibe code with something like Razor Pages or Blazor, you will get really bad results with most models out there. In fact, all models, you're going to have to handhold and explain a lot, quite a bit. You don't have that with JS and Python. And unfortunately, that's the ecosystem we're in. It's things we need to be aware of. I want to point out one last thing. A few months ago, .NET was moved from where it was, which I think it was under Azure, to be now under these core AI platforms and tools. So Microsoft basically poached Meta Executive, joined Microsoft, and now is leading this new core AI platform. And the DevDiv and AI platform are now under this core AI. So basically, DevDiv is under AI. What does that mean? Well, it means that you're going to see a lot more AI in .NET, which you see already. I mean, it's not news to you. That's where Microsoft is doing. There's two initiatives. There is... AI and there is security. So Microsoft is now betting not just on the .NET is great and fast and Aspire is amazing, but also you're going to see deep integrations in .NET, which you already see. Just something I want to point out, because I think for startups and small businesses, deep AI integration will make a big difference and languages and frameworks at this point should have it. Is it a bubble? Will it burst? I don't know. I'm going to let you decide that, but that's my opinion. But now I wonder from you, what do you think about this? And is .NET ultimately good for startups, small businesses, or even solo developers? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep coding.